Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Charles Owen with Paladin Data Corporation. Really appreciate your punctuality and showing up on time here. We're going to go ahead and get started in a couple of minutes. Just want to mention a couple of things. The topic for today is all about customer projects and jobs. So if you had any question about this, if you've used piece of this, pieces of this in the past, I'll show you kind of the complete picture of projects. If you have any questions, I'm going to do those at the end of this presentation and this will be recorded so you're able to watch this anytime in the future if you miss any part of it or you want to share it with your team all right so let's go ahead and get started so what you'll learn today is we're going to talk about projects or jobs however you want whatever your terminology is in paladin we're going to learn how to create projects deactivate restore projects apply customer invoices and credits to projects uh, some of the reporting capabilities of the projects, breakdown of the projects, open item accounting by project, which is new, which we'll share with you, and then view some of the uh, invoice payment history options that you have that you can view, getting creative with the project feature. So if you're not in tune with really doing a lot of contractor sales and you don't need to really manage projects or jobs, it's okay. There's still an opportunity to use this feature. So we'll talk about that. And then uh, I have some bonus material for you, and we'll just wrap it up after that. So managing projects and jobs in Paladins, you know, if you have contractors, builders, plumbers, you know, they all are constantly moving from one job to another, and it's up to the retailer to really help them coordinate their projects when it comes to their purchases and their credits and managing it by job. So we can absolutely do that. It is uh, also vital for suppliers to accurately manage their accounts receivables, which is uh, we can manage the accounts receivables for your customers, your contractors, and provide a breakdown of the summary of jobs and projects as well. All right, so let's move on to creating projects for accounts. So the, this is kind of a busy slide, but it's real simple. You just go to the customer module press the F4 key or click on the projects and authorize signers command. Once you do that, you select the projects radio button. So you'll see on that image in the center towards the top, you just select the projects. If you don't, it defaults to authorize signer. So you must choose projects. Then select the add button and uh, enter the address or memo on one or both lines. And then press the F12 key to finish it, to save it. And that's all there is to it. So that's how you create a project for a particular customer. So projects are associated with your account customers or charge account customers, typically charge account customers, but you can do it for non-charge account customers as well. So what if uh, a job goes away, a project goes away and you no longer want it to show up on the list? You can deactivate those projects very simply just by removing it. So again, you go in the customer module, go to the projects radio button, and now you select or highlight the job that you or a project that you no longer want to have in the system and just hit the remove button and finish. And that's it. Now, what if you mistakenly removed a job or the, that job came up again where the, the contractor said, hey, I need to apply this to a job. I know I was supposed to cancel it, but I still have some other things going on with this project I'd like to associate these invoices with. No problem. Then you go into a restore project. All you do there is, again, go into the customer module, go into projects and authorized signers, select the project radio button, and select the project and press on the restore button. That will restore it, and then we just hit F12 or click on the finish button, and that restores your projects. So that's it as far as creating projects, deleting project, restoring projects, that's all there is to it. Now, applying customer invoices and credits to projects. So anytime you sell a product to a customer that has projects, you'll get a drop down of those projects to select at the time you check out. Now, normally this happens when you're selecting a charge on account. So when you select, hey, I want to put this on account, then it's going to automatically prompt you with the, these three things here, the memo and PO number, authorized signers, 
in projects. You may also want that to appear when credit cards are used for your charge account customers. And you can do that. There is an option here, middle, middle of the page here, I just put in here, if you go to File Setup Credit Card tab and select Enable Authorized Signer for Credit Cards on File, and then also Enable Authorized Signer for all credit card transactions, that just putting it on file will only spawn this uh, this new uh, this new window or dialog box for uh, stored credit cards, or you can just do it every time a credit card is used by a customer that has a credit limit. Credit limit must be greater than zero. So even a credit limit of one cent will go ahead and invoke this particular window to pop up, prompting them to. Uh, optionally or required fill in the information depending on how you set it up. This is true, you can set this up for both charges and credits. So when you have a credit, you may also assign that to a particular job. So if you wanted to return particular components of a purchase, which is very common for these for these projects, right? You just choose an existing project from the projects drop down list or add a new one and then press the next button to continue the process process or checkout process. All right now, how do you get a listing of the of these uh these projects? Well, there's there's different ways. You can go in and get a listing report from the customer module if you go again to the customer module and in the customer module you click on the uh, credit tab and choose the customer friendly sales history magnifying glass. When you do that, on the left-hand side, you can see where I've highlighted it with a red circle, it says projects all, it just defaults to all projects. However, if you wanna pick a particular project, it will display only those invoices for that project. And then at the bottom, you can press the report button, which prints those invoice, that invoice listing, not the detail, but the invoices, and it adds that to an Excel spreadsheet. Project invoice detail report from the reports module. So if you wanna get a detailed transaction report, you simply go to the reports module, select sales analysis, what I need to know, transaction report. Now in the transaction report, there's an additional settings area where on the right-hand side, you can see I've highlighted in a large red circle here, and you can do a keyword search on active project. You can do it on also on on uh, discontinued or deleted projects as well, but for active projects, you can see a drop down list and then you will select whichever project you want. You can put in the date range and uh, make sure that you select your customer as well. So when you're into the settings, not the additional settings, but the, the basic criteria, that is where you select your customer ID in the starting and ending settings. So if you select keyword, you'll see a dropdown of their projects. Select active project, you'll see a dropdown. Select the project and then hit the report button. And now you can also set the date range to how far back you want these transa this transaction report to, to search. It can go back as far as you want. So if somebody comes in and says, hey, I need to see all of my detailed invoices for a particular project for last year, no problem. Go in and put a date range of January to December, select the customer in the customer as with their customer ID, go and select the active project that you want, hit report button, and then it will produce a detailed report showing every invoice for that, that particular job. All right, so project breakdown with email statements. Well, you can get a project breakdown with email statements. You can also get a project breakdown anytime on demand. So if you have customers that want it, that don't get emails, it's so easy to generate it. When you, uh, first of all, the email thing happens automatically. You just tell the system that you want a breakdown of the email statements to be sent automatically with the emails. And when you email those statements, it's done. If you want to go in after the fact, after you run statements and select specific customers, that want a breakdown of Excel, you can just do that. You can go to the customer module, press the F9 or 
click on the view past statements button. You'll see it on the bottom of the screen circle. So if you go into the custom module, you'll see F9 view past statements, click on that. It will immediately reproduce both a reprint of the statement and an Excel project breakdown report that you can then print or email to the customer. Okay, moving on. Now this is a new feature. I put a little note up on there on top in process of rolling out to the general release. So we now have the projects can be assigned at time when you're doing open item payment management. So this will enable you to see all charge invoices for a particular project and also the credit invoices, you'll be able to see the project as well if one was assigned to it when returning project products to the store. Payment management, when, when receiving a, a uh, paid on account or received on account payment, <coughs> excuse me, you won't necessarily know which to apply those to, so you, the who's ever in the accounting will have to uh, talk with the customer to figure that out. But when you return products, you get a credit. That credit can be assigned to a particular job. So you just go into <clears throat> make sure they're set up for open item accounting. Go to customer module, press the F6 payment management command. You'll see in the bottom of the screen circled F6 payment management. Under charge invoice windows, you now it will automatically select the no project. But if you wanted to drop down and select a particular project, you will now see all charge invoices associated with a particular project. Then you can choose the credit invoice to associate with that charge invoice for each project as well. Now that shows uh, on the right hand side, it shows under the credit notes field. So if you click on an invoice, it normally tells you what the check number is. If it's a deposit for special orders, it'll show that. It's now also going to show, if it's a credit, it will show the project that was assigned to that particular credit. All right, good stuff. You can also view invoice payment history. This is a new button that is on the, on the bottom part of the payment management screen. It says invoice payment history. When you click on that, so you just go into customer module, select the payment management command. Under charge invoices, select the project that you want, and then click on the invoice payment history. And what that'll give you is it'll give you an Excel spreadsheet where you can view the invoice payment history by project. Again, that's just gonna show you this a uh, couple of different options here. It's gonna have one Excel spreadsheet with two workbooks. One says charges. The other workbook will say credits and on top of both of them not shown here but we've added it since this um, this view we've added the project obviously which makes sense to this to this excel spreadsheet as well all right moving on so let's get creative with the project feature so what if you're not uh it just doesn't appeal to you it's something that you're not doing it's not applicable for your business or store well there's other ways to use this feature as well for example, if you tailor to uh, property management companies or uh, you, know, you, ha you have people that, that are in real estate and they have certain addresses that they, that they manage. In this case, I have an example of four different apartments, apartment one through four for Park Avenue. You can easily manage these projects, these apartments, and all of those invoices associated with those departments. So property managers love this feature. Also, you may use it for storing tax exemption IDs and expiration dates. You can set that up as well for as a project for your farmers, and it will give you uh, easy tax tracking and reporting. All right, let's move on. The next one here is bonus material. So we are now looking at something that uh, is, is more of a back office function. It's something that enables you to go in and change the project if the wrong project was assigned to the invoice. You don't have to void the invoice and re-add it and you know backdate the invoice or any of that. Nope, all you need to do is go to maintain data viewer. So if you look on the bottom of the screen in palette and point of sale, the red bar, you'll see that maintain button. You click on that. There'll be another button called or drop down called data viewer. And then there's the invoices tab, which you'll see circled 
on the very top of the left hand side of the image that we have here invoices once you go there then you just select or put in your invoice id and hit the get data button and it pulls up the invoice right there now on the invoice you now have the capability on the project side so you'll see the project right above the bonus star there's a red circle here in that you'll see a drop down of your jobs and you can change the job for the invoice even after the fact now there's also another you have another capability here where you can change the memo or po number as well you'll see that's right to the left of the project you'll see po number here you can actually change the memo and or the PO number if you need to as well. And that covers it for the bonus material. We have managed to scoot through this presentation in about 15 minutes. If I went too fast for you, you can always re-watch re this webinar and, and jump to the section that you want and slow it down if you like. But everything you want to know about projects is, is in this presentation. There's more detailed information and written instructions in the knowledge base. Also, this webinar presentation will be available in the knowledge base as well. To get to it, you just go to under the Paladin application, go to the help, and then you can select knowledge base or webinars to go specifically right to it through the application. Or from home, you can go to portal.paladinpos.com and see this same information. It's a great resource for watching training videos, re-watching webinars like this one, and just any basic help that you need on uh, knowledge base. Just a plug for our next webinar on September 13th at 9 a.m. We are doing a presentation on advanced sales, so BOGOs and more. So we'll be talking about how to set up BOGO sales. So if you're a store that doesn't do a lot with sales and BOGOs, which stands for buy one, get one, as you know, get one free, uh, we can now, we'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to watch this webinar and uh, and get caught up on that. So you can maybe entice more customers to come to your store. All right, so again, uh, we appreciate your, uh, you attending this this webinar. It tells us that you're interested in in bettering your store and in, in growing your, your store and looking at how to leverage the Paladin system. There are some other resources you can go to under our paladinpointcell.com. You can click on uh, webinar or uh, click on websites and click on retail science. You may also go into the Paladin help portal to see webinars, knowledge base. And then of course we have our store that's on there as well. If you wanted to buy supplies, they're available as well. Kind of stalling here to see if we have any questions. I don't see any questions. That tells me it was pretty straightforward. Hopefully you uh, you are gained from watching this and that was a valuable use of your time. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now. So God bless everybody. Thank you so much. Stay safe and until next time, see you later.